Is Europe heading for war? It's a question that's been asked almost every day for the last one month. And I'll tell you why. Because tension has been escalating almost every day. Ukraine says it fears an invasion at any moment. The U.S. says the situation is dangerous. Russia says it's NATO's fault. Europe says it's the closest to war it has been in three decades. We'll start with the Russia-Ukraine border. This is what it looks like. These are Russian soldiers stationed near the Ukraine border and conducting tactical exercises complete with gunfire and missiles. In response, Ukraine has deployed anti-tank missiles, weapons they got from their Western friends very recently. Ukraine showed them off in a Hollywood-style video. So with soldiers deployed and saber-rattling in full form, is war only a matter of time? Diplomatic efforts are on, but all sides are talking at each other rather than talking to each other. The crisis began in October last year. Two months, two weeks and six days have passed. No breakthrough. Let me show you some satellite pictures now. These are Russian soldiers near the Ukrainian border. Moscow has been moving tanks, infantry vehicles, rocket launchers and other military equipment. Some eyewitnesses managed to click photographs. This is the Russian military equipment that we're talking about being transported on rail cars. Eyewitnesses have spotted several such trains passing through. Russia is building pressure. It began by deploying troops in the north and the east, the areas where it shares a border with Ukraine. And now it has sent troops to Belarus. From here, Russia could potentially target Kiev, the capital of Ukraine. Russian military hardware has begun arriving in Belarus. This welcome ceremony happened at an undisclosed location. Russia and Belarus say they'll now conduct joint military drills to practice what they call repelling external attacks. Presidents of the Russian Federation and the Republic of Belarus agreed to hold these joint drills last December. The presidents decided to conduct a surprise check of forces and appraise their readiness to provide military security and also to exercise joint action in various situations for threat repelling and stability operations at the Union state borders. The U.S. has pressed the panic button. It feels this deployment in Belarus is a major escalation. America believes Russian troops could stay in Belarus permanently and with nuclear weapons. The Russian deployment coincides with an upcoming referendum, one that could turn Belarus into a garrison for Russia. The U.S. is concerned about the proposed changes to the Belarusian constitution. The new law could allow Russia to host conventional and nuclear forces in Belarus. At this point... This is only an American assessment. There's little to suggest that Russia and Belarus are acting on this. So what's the basis of America's assertions? A threat by Alexander Lukashenko last year. He's the leader of Belarus. Last year, Lukashenko said his country will host Russian nukes if NATO forces moved similar weapons to eastern Ukraine. Speaking of which, U.S. intelligence is also concerned about what's happening in Ukraine, what Russia is doing in Ukraine. It says Russia has deployed operatives inside Ukraine in the rebel-controlled areas of eastern Ukraine. The U.S. believes these operatives could carry out acts of sabotage, something that looks like a military operation that could be blamed later on Ukraine. U.S. intelligence says this would give Vladimir Putin a pretext to launch an invasion. Moscow, of course, has dismissed all of these claims and has called them misinformation. But the Biden administration is acting on these inputs. It is giving more weapons to Ukraine, mortars, anti-tank missiles, anti-aircraft missiles, among others. NATO allies are expected to send these, starting with the UK, which has already shared some weapons. The White House says Russia could launch an invasion any time. So let's be clear. Our view is this is an extremely dangerous situation. We're now at a stage where Russia could at any point launch an attack in Ukraine. An extremely dangerous situation, she says. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken landed in Kiev today. He met Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. Today, there are some 100,000 Russian soldiers 
near Ukraine's borders, uh, and in that sense, the threat to Ukraine is unprecedented. So the president asked me to underscore once again uh, our commitment uh, to Ukraine's territorial integrity, to its sovereignty, uh, to its independence. And I know that's a message that you've heard not just from us, but from so many uh, partners uh, throughout Europe. What about America's ally, Europe? Well, they too are worried about the escalating tensions. The European Union feels the region is spiraling towards its worst security crisis in decades. Germany says it cannot afford to stay silent anymore. Still too early to tell whether they will help de-escalate the situation Russia created by concentrating 100,000 troops along the border with Ukraine. But after years of rising tensions, staying silent is not a sensible option. Now, this is the version of America and its allies. They are blaming Russia for what's happening. Now, let's tell you what Russia says. It claims the West is escalating tensions. The West is at fault. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov has issued a firm response. He's accused the United States and NATO of double standards. <laughs> We don't threaten anybody with anything, but we do hear the threats addressed to us. I hope it only reflects certain emotions that certain powers incite within the Western camp. We will act in accordance with concrete steps, concrete actions. So this is a classic stalemate. Multiple rounds of talks have failed. Thousands of troops on both sides are staring down at each other. Any misstep now could result in a full-blown conflict. And even the, even the smallest mistake could prove to be very costly. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.